Hi everybody, it's Martin from the Washboard Resonators. Are 1970s Dobros any good? Let's find out. So over the years, I've heard conflicting things about these 70s Dobros. So on this video, um, between us, let's just put this through the paces and see what we think. So on this video, we'll look at four things. We're gonna just look at the details of this instrument. We're also going to look at some sound clips and some comparisons so you can hear what this thing sounds like. Um, I'll give you a little bit of history about 1970s Dobros. And then I have this for sale. So at the end, I'll share some details about that if it might be of interest. <laughs> Okay then, so let's look at the details of this now. So this is what's known as a Model 33D. This particular one was made in 1973. And what was the 33D? Well, it was a brass body, 14 fret, single cone guitar with etched kind of designs on it. Um, the thing which really kind of sets it apart, you can see it's the Model D. It has the D for Dopira or Dobro etched onto the back. You could sort of think about this as being like their attempt to come back with a kind of 14 fret style O kind of design back in the 70s. So what are other details on this? It has a mahogany neck, it has some very nice Grover tuners, rosewood fretboard. Fascinating that at the time they were kind of, uh, you'd almost say cobbling these things together with a very small staff. It's got a single cone which we'll come to in a second because that's a bit weird. There's a couple of interesting things about Dobros at this period. I think that they are um, very handmade, very small staff, and they're very idiosyncratic. So one of the details you'll notice is the F-holes are very small. Um, instead of making a, a new piece of tooling to make a normal sized F-hole, they just happen to still have the, the die from the 1920s that was used to make tenor guitars in the National Factory. Well, that came down the line with them 40, 50 years. So they just used that to stamp out the F-holes. The other thing is that the brass body is nickel plated. The cover is chrome plated. So in the right light, you'll see that the, the cover plate is a little bit more silvery and the body is slightly more yellow from the nickel plating. So what's so weird about these single cones in these systems. Well, this is at the heart of it, the heart of a resonator guitar. And this is what some of the people I've spoken to on the phone over the years would say about why maybe these guitars um, aren't seen as being as good as other ones. Well, let's have a look at what that is. So the, I think the Dupira family were trying to be able to produce lots of different models from the same tooling without the expense of coming up with different tooling designs. So the idea was, was that when you stamp out um, the recess for the cone, you could put the normal Dobro spider bridge system in there. Now, that circle is 10 inches. On a normal national, the cones were nine and a half inches. Well, what they did in order to be able to do single cone guitars, they came up with a design for a 10 inch cone, which means that the cone is half an inch bigger. Doesn't sound like much, but if you think about it, those vibrations mm. from the strings have to travel a little bit further. There's more metal there. So that will, to a degree, impact the sound before the sound can uh, radiate into the body and through, through the guitar. The next part about the uh, single cone design in the 70s Dobros is that apparently they had a, a former or a die made for spinning these 10 inch cones, which had eight ribs to strengthen. Well, when they moved premises, apparently they lost that piece of tooling. So in the end, the cones that they were spinning, which are just plain cones with no emboss embossment on, they were collapsing. So they spun them out of thicker aluminium. So there are two reasons why perhaps these guitars might not project as much as other resonators. Does it affect the sound? We're going to listen to it next. But before we hear this guitar, just help us if you can. Um, subscribe below, 
leave a comment or go in the description. And the best thing you can do, if I'm honest, is to join the mailing list. We have a new album coming out. We have a tour coming up. Just find that link, sign it. It takes 10 seconds. That is the best way to support us and help us. Thank you. So let us talk sounds now. This guitar has just come back from Steve Evans, who is um, runs a company called Beltona Instruments. He makes some of the world's finest replica resonators. He's built for Eric Clapton. He used to work for Mark Knopfler. He lives 20 minutes away. He's a good guy. Well, he took this in for me to fix it. I got this guitar from a guy who's had it since 1981, and it's 2021 as I film this. And the guy sold me this guitar, but you know what? It had a lot of road use and the frets were shot, the action was high, the strings were popping out. I took it to Steve and Steve said, you know what? I can do a nice little quick job on this and I can reset the neck and get it as good as it possibly can be. So this is a good time to actually hear it. So I've got it tuned to open D because that's how it came from Steve's. Um, it's got the original nickel strings on that the chap I bought it off had on. They're relatively new from what I can tell, so the nickel strings are a little bit warmer. We did do a video about string types and resonators, you'll be able to find it in our uh, videos. So let's hear it! <laughs> I mean, for me, that sounds like a, a perfectly nice brass body guitar. I will compare it with another national in a second, but... Uh... First thing I thought when I played this in a, in, in a car park of a, of a motorway service station was, okay, I don't feel it's necessarily as loud or quite as bright as other resonator guitars. Having had some time with it, I do actually like the sound. I think it's got a nice, I think it's a nice sounding guitar. It's warmer, it's full, maybe it isn't quite so sparkly, perhaps it could do with some phosphor bronze strings or monol strings to give it a bit more sparkle, but... Um... One of the things I notice about it is it's very reverberant, so it could be good for more kind of, you know, prettier things. I think that reverb... Comes the the the, uh, the 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 gap between the tailpiece and the bridge is longer than on other guitars. I noticed there's much more sound there than there is on other national. So when you play it, I find if you stop it, you can hear that ringing behind the note. Let's just try that behind the bridge. I mean, can you hear that? So it's hard doing comparisons. This is 14 fret with a mahogany neck. Well, I've got here a, a 12 fret with a maple neck, very different instruments. This is, you know, but they're both brass bodies. This, this is a 34 National with a normal comb. Let's just compare them and see what we think. Dobro. So it's maybe not the fairest of tests, but I think now that Steve Evans has worked on this and reset the neck and got that, you know, ideal break angle, I think this is a perfectly decent instrument. <laughs> Sounds like a decent resonator guitar. And um, all those people I've spoken to that, you know, say, well, you know, they don't really, they're not as responsive, they're not as clear as other ones. I get it. But it... It still does a great job. I think if you're somebody that's, um, you know, you're wanting to maybe up your resonator game and you've been used in using these Chinese ones or whatever, maybe you can't stretch to a vintage national or a national resophonic or a mule or any others. Um, you want something cool with a vibe? 
here it is. If you pay the right price for something like this, you'll always keep the resale. And then if, you, if you've got the money later on to get one of the, you know, something perhaps different or better, then you just get, you'll just get your money back. And this was free to use for as long as you needed it. I think this is perfectly, perfectly decent. You know, it could even be good for somebody that's like going out gigging. You know, you just pop a Crevo pickup on it, a Michael Messer pickup, you know, and plug it in. You wouldn't be too worried about taking it out. It's already gigged since 1981. Um, you know what? It's a nice guitar, this. I'll be, in a way, I'll be sorry to see this go. So now let's just do a little bit of history about 70s Dobros. You may have already seen our video about the history of resonator instruments. And we just cross over this part of the resonator history very quickly in that video. Um, essentially, there were four brothers that were part of um, the initial startup of Nationals and Dobros. And, the two, and two pairs of brothers split off. Now, that was in the 1920s and 30s. But by the late 60s, two of the brothers, which was Rudy and Ed, they were trying to remanufacture these things, especially for like blue, uh, bluegrass musicians that play these things as lap instruments. Resonators and particularly Dobro styles were the, the sound. And somebody had to be making these because you, otherwise you'd only be buying 20, 30, 40 year old ones by that point. So loads of complicated things happen. But by 1967, they were making instruments under the OMI brand, Original Musical Instruments. About 1970, they regained the use of the brand name Dobro by taking that away from the Moserite company. They were making these instruments in um, a, a, just a little shop on Long Beach in California. And I believe they were even like the two brothers were living upstairs above the shop. So it really was, when I said these things were idiosyncratic and they were trying to save on tooling, I mean, they really, really were trying to kind of provide things for musicians, probably with not a lot of money floating around. It's a very interesting part of the Resonator story. Uh, I've heard all kinds of tales from people that worked at that factory or knew people that worked at that factory. Uh, that's probably for another video or one of our podcasts that we now do where we interview and talk to people. So we'll try and get that forward in the future. But... Um, yeah, here we go, uh, a 1970s uh, Dobro. And I did mention that this guitar's for sale. Well, let's just talk about that. So it's mid-September 2021. I bought this and a bunch of other guitars from somebody that was looking for some money quickly. The guitar was a mess, very hard to play. So it's had the setup. Um, if you think you might be interested, I'm gonna let this go for basically what I've got in it and a little bit more. I'm gonna be looking for you know, probably under what I see these things being listed for on Reverb, so probably around £1,500. I'm in Leeds in the north of England. Um, so if you might be interested, do get in touch. Um, it's here, you can try it, we can meet up, we can do it Covid safe, that's fine. Um, but this video isn't really about selling this guitar, but I might as well mention it. Um, I really wanted myself to put a guitar like this through the paces, and I've had a nice play with this since I got it back. I've really enjoyed playing it and I can see, you know what, I can see there's a really good usable, tangible thing with this. Um, and I hope that this goes to somebody, you know, who would also like to have a good, usable, interesting guitar with some mojo that is a great part of the history of these old, beautiful resonator instruments. So thank you very much everybody, my name is Martin, the band is the Washboard Resonators and you know what, we're professional musicians, we make our money gigging, selling CDs and t-shirts, there's links in the description to find all that, we, we're going out touring this November, do join the mailing list below. Um, otherwise, uh, thank you for making it this far if you have, very few do, it's, but it's appreciated and uh, we hope to see you all out there, thank you! Bye-bye for now.